welcome to the Late Look Laws. With Sharuna Saga. Good evening, I'm Sharuna Saga. A teenager who filmed himself abusing police and shouting, let the town burn, has been sent to a young offenders institution. 18-year-old Brandon Welch admitted violent disorder during disturbances in Darlington in August. Peter Harris reports. That time he's smashing up, lad. Smash it up. He filmed this himself. <laughs> oh, boys are getting smashed up. And live streamed it on TikTok. <laughs> Incriminating himself in the process, shouting threats at the police. Today, 18-year-old Brandon Welsh was given 15 months detention after admitting violent disorder in Darlington. The court heard the trouble in Darlington broke out on August the 5th. It was said a group of white men were attempting to approach a mosque and there'd been racist chanting. They were met, it was said, by a large group of Asian men with Durham police forming a line between the two. It was said the police had been fiercely attacked. Now, Brandon Welsh's role in this was said by the judge to have been racially aggravated. He suffers from cerebral palsy. It was said that he regrets his behaviour, which he accepts was appalling. Darlington was the last of the significant summer disturbances in the northeast. Earlier, a young mother who took part in the first one in Harfingpool in July was also jailed. CCTV showed 21-year-old Tamsin Kerr throwing a stone at police and handing another to someone else. She'd missed her child's first birthday while in custody for violent disorder. A judge jailed her for 12 months. Peter Harris, BBC Look North. Councils in the North East could be the hardest hit by cuts to budgets for parks and green spaces. Local authorities in deprived communities are said to be most at risk from further reductions in funding. Research suggests the region has the highest percentage of children living more than a 10 minute walk from a play park. Earlier this year, councillors in Stockton warned that there was a growing inequality in play provision across the borough. It's a well-deserved help. Uh, for too long, docks and councillors neglected many areas of the borough. We look here in Fairfield at this solitary slide. It's time to actually have a look again and start spending money that people put into the coffers on the things that matter, like play parks. A spokesperson for Labour-led Stockton Council said they were working through the recommendations to improve play areas. And you can find out more in this week's BBC Politics North, which is on the iPlayer now. Well, it's been described as a story fit for Hollywood. A group of men from Darlington who, following a combination of COVID lockdown boredom and a few too many drinks, decided to buy a bargain racehorse. But four years on, the darkest of dark horses has become an unlikely winner and helped the men through their own difficult times. Sherwin Cook has been to meet them. On a racehorse that would one day run at York, the place they called the Ascot of the North. But they never imagined their bargain buy could ever win. Born during the Covid lockdown, the men met up in a friend's garden. That's when the big idea came. But what influenced such a drastic decision? Uh, in short, alcohol. Uh, so I <laughs> had a few too many and then decided it might be a good idea to buy a race horse. What we found out was, um, so racing behind closed doors, the owners could still get a pint. So again, there was more people getting involved, and next thing we know, we're, we come to visit here, and we bought a racehorse. The group chipped in £8,000 for short time for homes. Not everyone, though, was convinced by their investment. Horse races are just a money pit, just don't do it. Uh, and he kind of slowly ground down one of the two others, and he knew that once he cracked me, he knew that was it because I'm the organiser, so I'm the one that as soon as he breaks me, he knows it's a goer. So we were thinking we'll have three runs, it'll fall out the back of the TV, he'll soon get bored, and then we'll just move on with our lives. But this group is as much about friendship as it is about winning. Mike says it's greatly helped him 
after his wife Barbara died unexpectedly. He said, yes, oh, you look forward to something when you haven't. I don't know, you know, lost, as I say, I lost my wife, and then, you know, you, you look forward to things and making up with the lads, going to races, and a, and a good chat, you know, just helping each other out as much as we can. Short Hands now won four races, including that memorable day in York, which offered the men their greatest sporting achievement. So what about the future? Short Hands, OK, he's healthy, he's fit, and he can get out and run local tracks. That's all we, that's all we wish for now. We, we never sell him. He means that much to us. We never sell him. And, uh, yeah, as long as he's fit and healthy, we've got that's all we can ask. Stuart Newcomb, BBC North. luck with the weather. Here's Paul Mooney. Good evening. After a fine start to the week, things will turn a bit wet through the middle part, but a bit milder with it. Now we head into tonight with a dry picture, but the cloud increasing all the time from the south. So most places will end in a fairly cloudy, but staying mostly dry. Not as cold as last night because of that cloud. Temperatures generally down to three or four Celsius, just one or two spots, a little bit cooler. Into tomorrow then, it's certainly a cloudier picture than today. A few gaps in the cloud, a few brief brighter spells, but a lot more cloud. Most places though hold off uh, dry through the bulk of the day. A more noticeable southerly breeze, temperatures peaking around about 14 Celsius. It's wet on Wednesday for most of us, some heavy rain at times. That clears through though on Thursday, it's drier, it's brighter, and it is a bit milder. That's all we have time for this evening. Thanks for watching. Have a peaceful night. Bye bye.